right, so in this video we're going to talk about what you can do to make a dent on these ecological situations in the world, um, climate change or all the other ones we've talked about in the earlier videos. Um, I'm sitting in front of my house right now and about eight years ago we completely retrofit the house. We moved it from about an R8, uh, R value is the amount of insulation in the wall, the amount of resistance towards leaking thermal energy from the building. Um, we moved it from about R8 to R30 um, and in doing so we cut our energy consumption um, by about a factor of 10. Now we didn't just change the walls, we also put in new windows, triple glaze, fiberglass windows. We added um, about R50 into the ceiling, so we've got a total of R60 right now. Um, we took some windows out, we put some windows back in. Um, and the house is just so much more comfortable. So, like I said, we use about a tenth of the energy now. And once you get to that kind of deep level of retrofit, other options start to become available to you. So, number one, the furnace that you use can be super small. In fact, we struggled to find a furnace that would have a, a large enough turn down, which basically means that it would feather down to a small enough BTU per hour in order to not overpower our house. Um, so that's interesting. So you can use a smaller mm -hmm. furnace. Generally, smaller furnaces are cheaper than bigger furnaces. Mm -hmm. Plus, they use less energy. Um, number two, you can start to use things like solar thermal to provide supplementary heat for your house. Now, solar thermal won't help in these northern climates when we get to the depth of the winter, like December, January, and February. But in the shoulder seasons, we can make a significant dent on house heating um, if there is any required, depending on how you've retrofitted your house. Um, so reducing the thermal energy from your house has lots of benefits, um, you know, personally for personal comfort inside. But the main one that we're talking about in this video series is that if we have to burn less energy, um, we're producing less GHGs. Um, and generally that is going to be good in terms of managing that contribution to climate change. Um, it can be quite expensive to retrofit these houses and so I generally don't focus on the GHG reductions or the climate change benefit when I'm dealing with my clients on this stuff. A lot of my climate clients will come to me and want to move to a more um, self-supply when it comes to heat. So they'll want to heat with wood or they'll want to heat with solar and so it's really difficult to uh, have a self supply of thermal energy if your house is not inefficient. And what's crazy about the houses in Canada, especially in the cold parts of Canada, is that the majority of them that were built in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, even some in the 2000s, I mean, we only have a marginally larger amount of insulation in our walls than houses in California, which is completely insane. I mean, it gets to minus 40 here. So, um, I highly recommend that if you're going to buy a house, you make sure that the house is retrofittable. If you're going to build a house, do yourself a favor and build it to passive house standards. I'll put a link to passive house training and different examples of passive house in the show notes below. Um, and if you live in a house that is retrofittable, I think it's worth considering uh, the job, even though it is quite expensive. If you're going to do it yourself, you can do retrofit a house for as little as about thirty or forty thousand dollars, which sounds like an enormous amount of money. But um, you'll see that money uh, come back to you when you sell your house down the road in, um, you know, upsell, upsell. Especially if we start to see some energy issues in the future, which I suspect that we will. Um, you'll also see savings on a, on an annual, a monthly basis. Right now, the savings are not going to be huge because natural gas in my opinion is basically free uh, you will see lots of savings if you heat your house with electricity electricity prices have generally been trending up in canada there are some exceptions to that um, overall um, i know the electricity markets in alberta are a little bit wonky right now but um, generally speaking our electricity prices have been inching upwards and so if your house is heated by electricity um, you know, retrofitting and reducing the energy consumption of your house is going to have a dramatic impact. In fa impact. Um, the other thing that people don't realize about natural gas is, yes, it costs uh, three bucks a gigajoule. Like I said, it's kind of free. But if that gas is coming from wells that have been fracked, you're also having, uh, you're creating impact on ecological consequences in the extraction of natural gas and or fossil fuels. So 
generally speaking, most of my clients um, that I work with, I recommend that they look at at least a partial, if not a deep energy retrofit. Um, first for comfort, second for the expense of their pocketbook, um, and, uh, and or the ability to self-supply with thermal energy, either with wood fuel or with solar electricity or solar thermal. So if you found this interesting and you want to learn more about this stuff, check out our website at vergepermaculture.ca. Make sure you like the video below if, it, if you liked it and uh, subscribe to our channel. I'll also put a link to a free Introduction to Permaculture course in the show notes below and in the final title card on the video. Thanks so much. Have a great day.